Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Doug Moore. I'm the sales manager here at Juniper Systems. Uh, pretty excited to talk today a little bit about Aspect. We uh, are trying to keep this brief and there's a lot that we can cover, so I'm going to move fairly quickly. Uh, please, if you have any questions, type them in the chat box. We'll try to respond to them as best we can during the presentation, but also, we will make sure that if we don't answer your questions during the presentation, we will get back with you with answers to those questions. So uh, to start, I want to just talk a little bit briefly about our company, uh, Juniper Systems. We have been around since 1993. Uh, this is home. Uh, we build an awful lot of devices for uh, outdoor aggressive use, rugged devices. We've done a lot of business in a variety of industries, in natural resources and in uh, land survey. Uh, to give you an idea, last year we, we put 8,000 handheld computers into the hands of land surveyors alone. So we're a pretty established company and have a lot of experience with uh, handheld computing and GPS. Uh, and so with that background, uh, we saw an opportunity to help specifically irrigation and landscape professionals with a product called Juniper Aspect. Um, Aspect is a uh, GPS-based mapping solution. Uh, it uses handheld computers. Uh, you can also use optional higher accuracy GPS receivers. And then in addition to that, uh, there is software, both desktop software and software that operates on the handheld computer. So those are kind of the key elements. And like I said, it is designed for irrigation and landscape professionals. It's a very intuitive tool. Um, there's a lot of other GIS software tools out there that do the kinds of things we do with Aspect, but they usually take quite a bit more experience and expertise to operate. We design this to be simple and easy to get up and running. Uh, Aspect gets used for a lot of things. I've got a list here, but it was originally designed as a product for doing as-builts, um, but it became quickly obvious that there were a lot of other benefits, and we've added some features to help support those benefits for a variety of, uh, of maintenance things related to property management. And so um, it, whether it's mapping trees or mapping uh, existing properties for maintenance schedules, we have people using it for snow removal. There's just a, a lot of varieties of uses uh, for the tool. And I think as you see uh, the demonstration, you'll get a good sense of, of some of the ways you might be able to take advantage of it. Uh, I want to quickly go over your hardware options first. So we're going to talk about hardware and then we'll get into a demonstration of the software. Uh, we have two handheld options that you can consider. The first one is our Archer 2. Uh, it's a, a little bit bigger than uh, your typical smartphone. It's uh, very rugged. Uh, that's kind of our one of our benchmark things that we do. We build really high-end stuff that's uh, waterproof, uh, virtually drop-proof, great screens for viewability. They work well. In the rain, you can notice this, this picture of this guy. He's got gloves on. They work well in glo with gloves. They're just intended for aggressive use uh, and used outside. So they're a great device for what we're doing. Like I say, they're glove friendly, good screen, um, waterproof. So if a, a sprinkler kicks on and sprays you right in the face, you can block it with the Archer 2. Uh, really excellent battery life. Uh, you will get a full day of work out of this device. You're not going to have any problems. Uh, it's ergonomically really quite friendly, comfortable to carry. We work hard on that to make sure that it uh, has minimal hand fatigue and those types of things. So carrying the device, honestly, it's a pleasure. They're, they're really nice to use. Um, and then uh, all of our devices come with uh, GPS receivers that are definitely a step up from what you get out of like your consumer grade smartphone or tablet. Uh, we do access multiple satellite networks to get you the best results possible. Uh, devices also come with cameras. You'll see that in Aspect, the ability to take pictures is beneficial. Um, option number two has fundamentally the same durability and screen, uh, you know, strength quality as the Archer 2. It's our Mesa 1. It's the, the Mesa is uh, slightly bigger. This is more of a tablet. Uh, so you have a lot more screen real estate. And honestly, that is the biggest difference uh, between uh, the Archer 2 and the Mesa. You can see this is a 5.7 inch screen. Uh, it's a great device. Again, similar ruggedness and durability and excellent ergonomics. Very, very long battery life. So e either device works excellent. Usually people 
choose between the two not based on uh, how well it will perform the job because that's equal between the two. It's just really a preference of do I want a larger screen or a smaller device. Uh, I mentioned that the, both of those devices come with GPS receivers built in. To give you an idea of accuracy, roughly they give you about a two meter circle on the earth whenever you map a point which is adequate in many situations, but oftentimes we're seeing customers request better accuracy, and I think there's a lot of sense to that. We have just recently released a new uh, GPS receiver that's just perfect for our Aspect customers. It's called the Geode. Uh, it's compact. It's just a little bit bigger than a hockey puck. Uh, it Bluetooth connects to both of the Mesa and the Archer 2 and works excellent with, uh, with the Aspect software. Um, I show you this to kind of give you an idea of what kind of accuracy we're talking about. You can see this blue dot that's on the left of your screen. That's about how accurate the, uh, your smartphone would be. So if you're standing right on the corner, you can see the corner on the other side easier. This is, the dot could land anywhere in that circle. It's about a five meter circle. So uh, when we go to the uh, Archer 2s and the, and the Mesas, that dot drops to about two meters. And with the Geode, we're getting down to what's called submeter, and frankly, well within submeter. When we have clear skies, we're often accurate to about a, a foot and a half. I've got this image to kind of give you another idea. That that circle there is a one meter circle, and you can see all those pink uh, dots there are locations picked up by a geode. So you can see that it's well within one meter in terms of accuracy. And, you know. Sometimes that's not a big deal, but if you're going back to look for a stop and waste, as an example, and uh, you're stab stabbing the, the grass searching, that one meter circle makes a big difference compared to a two meter or even worse, a five meter circle. Uh, with the GO, just really quickly, there's several ways to carry it. Uh, these are, you can do uh, the, the guy that you see here, uh, he's using just a camera monopod. That's a very cheap and simple solution. He can shorten it up and stuff it in a backpack really easily and do it that way. Again, no wire connection to the device because it's Bluetooth connected. We also do have cradles that can hold various handhelds and have the, the geode there. And another nice approach is to use a, an actual survey grade pole with mounting. You can see here we have a handheld mounted to that pole and so that's a nice solution as well. Okay, let's jump into the software. Uh, I'm going to start a uh, we have a simulator or a screen sharing tool that will allow you to see. I actually have an Archer 2 sitting here next to me that I'm using. And so you're going to see me interacting with that Archer 2 now directly to show you the, um, the handheld software. So when we get down to business, we want to either we can start a new project or we can open an existing project. Either method works fine. Uh, some of the benefits of starting a project uh, on the desktop software first and then having it already loaded onto the handheld, which I'll show you how to do in a moment, uh, is that you can have a base map loaded, but uh, the base map is just nice to have and not necessary to do the job properly. So either way works. Let's go ahead and open a project uh, and show you around a little bit. What happens when we open a project is it's basically opening a list of all the projects that we have uh, loaded onto the handheld device. The software is able to hold a lot of them, uh, but you can minimize the number of projects you actually have on the device as needed. So we have a few examples up here. Let's go ahead and jump into this uh, property management assessment that we did in Ohio. Uh, you can see obviously that it lists who created it and the location so that you can quickly choose the project that you want to go back to and look at. And uh, as that loads up, we can start to see what's been mapped. Uh, so here is a site, and as you can see, uh, there's a lot of stuff mapped. It's actually kind of messy, which is okay. Um, there's a way to control and, and, and clear that up, and I want to show you that right away. Down here we have a row of tools, and I'm going to focus on this one here first just so we can clean up our screen. So this allows us to choose what's visible. We have two things that are happening, a, a point that's on the device and a label associated. So I can turn either, you know, specific layers off, like if I want to turn off all my stop signs, I can just click those off. Or if I want, I can just say, I don't want any labels at all, so I'm going to turn off all labels. And let's go ahead and operate in that mode for a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that change. And 
we will see the screen come back up a lot easier for us to read and see what's what's going on here. Uh, some other tools that you want to know about. Uh, the hand tool is intended just to allow you to move the map. And so as I grab and click that, it allows me to adjust where I'm looking. We have some zoom tools. So if I want to zoom in on an area, I can select that. And let's zoom in over here and take a peek at what we have. And we can start to see uh, more details. We can also zoom out using the minus key. And again, we just drag an area and it will zoom out. Or if we just want to see the whole project, this button allows us to zoom out to show every point that's been mapped in one view. And so that's what you got with, with your navigating. So if we're on a site and we want to go ahead and map a point, uh, what we want to do is we want to, you know, you know, we're trying to say we have a certain object that we want to show where that is in the world. So we're going to go ahead and click this object selector here. And it's going to pull up a, a list of catalogs. And also we'll talk a little more about catalogs later. The device comes with a bunch of catalogs, but you're also able to edit, modify, and add to these really quite easily. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into our irrigation parts catalog. And we're going to go ahead and, and do a little mapping here just to, to show you how that works. Once you open up this parts catalog, it's going to give you a list of different object types that you can see here. And so uh, just as a simple example, let's go ahead and quickly map a controller. We are able to pull up and search by different uh, search preferences. So I want to go ahead and look for, uh, maybe I'll look for a rainbird. Uh, we'll search by series. I'm going to look for one of those LX uh, modulars, maybe, uh, and go ahead and select that controller. So now that I've selected the controller, what I would do in the field is I would stand right by that controller. And all I do is tap, it says here, tap anywhere on the map. You just Tap your finger on the button, and it pops this up to make sure you really want to map a point. You go ahead and click yes, and it now is going to start looking for the data from satellites. Now, I'm doing this demonstration indoors, which means I get no satellite reception. You can see I have a big red box here that says no good. So normally, immediately, this point would be mapped for you, and you would be ready to go. Um, since I'm inside, I'm going to have to do it the manual way, which is something you can do. You can come to your menu. You can say, I'm going to go ahead and add a point. And we're going to put it right here. Uh, maybe right there, we'll put a controller. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish. So what happens is, once I've mapped a point, I now have the ability to enter any information. I might say, this is controller 1. And it shows me the information uh, that's associated. Uh, you get to control some of the attributes that are here. This is not the most exciting example, but you can have things like where you can select a drop down for maybe you, you're looking at valves and you can say this one's leaky or we have a backflow preventer installed backwards. You can have drop downs for those things. You can have a time stamp that automatic, automatically stamps uh, when the point is taken. So there's a lot of things you can have inside of these object attributes to help you know more information about that specific attribute that you've just mapped. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. Edit Geometry allows me to remove the device if I need to move where the point was. Attributes gets me back into that screen we were just looking at where we can edit notes about the, the, the object. Capture Image opens up our uh, camera. And uh, we're going to take a picture of the whiteboard here. You'll see that I'm opening up my camera. And there we go. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and click OK and take a picture of our our sprinkler controller that looks like a whiteboard cleaner today, and hit save. So that, that image is now captured in our database with that object. So all of it's stored nice and clean for review later uh, for things that you may provide to your customers. Uh, so it's, it's just a nice tool. So once we've mapped that, we can go on and continue to map other objects and things. You'll notice that right up here I have something already there. So that is a sprinkler controller. If I want to, instead of searching the object database for that same ESP LX modular controller, all I have to do is click this, and then I can tap somewhere else and map a second one. Okay, And so it's really easy to add different things. Now, 
you know, a controller is something that we measure that we would consider what's called a point. It exists in one spot on the Earth, but we also have the ability to map what we call broadly lines and polygons. An example of a line might be mapping your main line, and so you can select uh, main line in your list, two inch PVC or whatever it might be, and you map, and now your mapping allows you to walk as you're mapping so that it maps the line. Uh, it's always wise to stop for a moment with any change of direction to give it a few seconds to capture a point at that change in direction and then continue to walk, and then you can close and finish. So you can capture lines that way, and also polygons, which is areas. So that gets used a lot for saying, I want to measure an area for a mow area or perhaps the coverage area of zone three. You can walk the perimeter of that and capture that area. So those tools are really quite easy to use. Um, in order to save time, I'm not going to get into too much detail on those in the handheld software. But fundamentally, you can see there's, there's not a lot of complexity to this. It's really quite simple to train people to get them out mapping uh, points for you. And uh, this is all there really is to it. Once you've finished mapping your points, you go ahead and close that. And it's going to be saved on the handheld. And we will now jump into the desktop software. So let me pop that open. I'm going to go ahead and go into the desktop tool. And here on the desktop tool, you can see that it's found that I'm connected to the device that we just had out in the field. And I want to go ahead and jump into the projects. So this is going to pull up all the projects I have on the desktop software, not just the projects that are on the Archer 2 that I've just had out in the field. Here's the list. You'll notice that there's a different, we have these light bulbs here that are actually a really nice quick indication of something. This one here is green. It says the project is synchronized. What that means is that the street sign inspection data on, <coughs> excuse me, on the desktop software and on the handheld computer are synchronized, okay? All the rest of these are either not there all, at all or need to be synchronized. So if we come up here and look at um, this City of Hope one, you can say this project can be copied to the handheld. So it's currently not on the handheld. But if I were to click this button, it would go ahead and synchronize that. I want to go to the one we were just looking at here, which is our Ohio Property Management Assessment. And this one, we do have device on, or data on the handheld. It says this project has updates to be synchronized. Well, we mapped a sprinkler controller that the desktop software doesn't know about yet. So let's go ahead and synchronize the project. And now what it's doing is communicating back and forth between the desktop software and the software on the handheld computer to make sure that all the data is the same on both sides. Uh, pretty straightforward process. Uh, this is a fairly large project. If you'll remember, there were an awful lot of label, labels. So we'll just take just a moment, but it's almost done. But while it's doing that, I can show you up here some of the other uh, options. We have a, a trash button here that allows you to delete a, a project. You can see I, if I click it, I can either delete it from the desktop or from both the desktop and the handheld if it's on the handheld. Um, we can edit the properties of it, so the name of it and who created it, job number, that kind of stuff. Um, and then... The main thing, you could also, here's where you would download a map. You can click this button to download a base map that's on the handheld. But let's jump into the project and take a look at that project we've been working on. Let's see, where did it go? Uh, there we are, the other one that's green. I'm going to go ahead and open that. So now that I am in the software, again, we're seeing lots of labels and stuff, and we have that same ability to navigate and control things here. So I have my same zoom in and zoom out tools here. If I want to zoom in on this area, we can go ahead and do that. If I want to zoom out, I can do that as well. If I want to see the whole project, I can do that. Um, I can also control what I'm viewing in terms of a base map. So here we have six different options you can select. So if I want to go with a Bing Roads image, it brings up the Bing's road map. Um, you'll notice a lot of our uh, labels are in white on this one. You, that's an option. You don't have to have white labels. Um, so, um, but if I, I can also say I want to see um, world imagery, and so there's that. I also have a, an opacity controller, which sometimes helps to make it easier to see what's going on. So you can adjust 
uh, how much how obvious that background map really is. I can go on over here to my object layers and here we have that same ability to say okay I don't want to see all those labels that's overwhelming so I'm going to click those off but I want to keep my icons visible. Selectable means that we're going to allow these to actually be edited so if you ever wanted to lock something to make sure nobody ever edited it you could uncheck that box and you can also control the opacity of data that's on this as well. One of the great things that I love in this particular selection tool is the ability to do some filtering. So if I want to go, I want to look at for a moment, uh, what's a good example here? Uh, let's see here. Oh, I didn't choose the best project for this, but let's go ahead and look at these pole mounted lights as an example. Um, so it has some filtering that's available to me. So I can say I want to look for a head type that contains a certain name, that type of thing. So if you know what you're looking for, I want to know if it's operational, yes or no. Looks like 28 out of 28 of these are operational. I can add if and logic. So if I want to say I want to do an end statement and say also I'm looking for if it's operational and if the uh, you know if painting is required and we're going to say yes there and all 28 of them need to be painted apparently so you have the ability to filter down on these searches and it, it's a great tool one of my favorite examples and this one doesn't have a lot of those but as an example you might want to do a tree audit and say okay I want to prune trees but these are I want to do all the big trees so we're going to have somebody come in with the appropriate equipment for tall trees and so show me all my trees that are over, you know, 30 feet tall that need pruning. And it's really easy to find those that way so that you know what work needs to be done. Uh, zoom 2 allows you to focus in. If we want to look at sprinkler controllers, we hit that Zoom 2 and there's our controller. Um, we do have the ability to, just so you know, import files. You can start with a KML or a CAD file. For the CAD file to work properly, that does have to be what's called a geo-referenced CAD file. Uh, so your CAD software is capable of having that happen so that the plan that you have in CAD knows where it is on the globe so that we can put it in the right place under the GPS data that we're collecting. You can download a base map. Let me go ahead and just jump into doing a little bit of editing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start editing. Here's that sprinkler controller I mapped earlier. You'll remember that I wasn't actually there so I just dropped it on there and I want to say I want to go ahead and let's oops my apologies let me zoom back in there that controller. So I want to go ahead and move that. I'm going to click move geometry and I'm going to move that that it, we're, we're going to say that it's right here on the wall there. Um, I can also uh, select that and edit some attributes as well. So I can come in and relook at the attributes associated with those and adjust it. Um, you know we might have here's another example where you can see some different types of attributes. Um, where you're choosing the wall mount or the control type. So there's just several ways that you can adjust what you're collecting on each point. Uh, you know, and so at this point, it just gives you a good opportunity to add additional options. You can do that as well. We can say, I want to add um, a tree. You know, I want to add a conifer. Uh, we're going to look for a pine, um, an Aleppo pine, and I'm going to go ahead and map it. I can put in the estimated uh, canopy diameter, might want to go the right way there, you know, health of the tree and so on and so forth and I can save that. So there that is and I can move that point around. So just like you're mapping in the field, you know, the difference is, is that in the field you're using GPS to decide where that dot gets placed, whereas here you're just using your mouse and moving things around. We can generate a bunch of reports. Oh, let me stop editing so I can get into that. Save my changes put a conifer right in the middle of the parking lot uh, and go ahead and generate the report so we can put in uh, all kinds of information title client name revision that kind of data you also have the ability to change the logo so if you were to click this button it allows you to open up your your browser to find a, a JPEG or whatnot of your company's logo and upload it so the reports that you generate look like they came from your company which is what they did you get to select specific information that you want posted in those reports. 
uh, and uh, and then go ahead and view the report. I haven't selected anything, so we may want to throw a few things in there. Oh, I was too quick, too quick there. But you're going to get an image, project name, and then any attributes you've chosen would show up in a, uh, you know, so if I start coming in here and selecting, I can select up to six different options. And if I view that, I, didn't, I probably didn't choose the best ones not knowing this project, but you'll see that down below in this report, we will get a list of, of things that meet those needs. And again, I didn't choose very good options, but that's how that works. Um, let's go ahead and look at some of the exports as well. So if we go ahead and export the project data, we have a variety of ways we can export it. We can go to CSV, we can go to Shapefile, we can go to KML, which is a Google Earth file, or to GeoDatabase. You can also just export the images, any pictures that you've taken. Uh, you know, each one of these has different benefits. I really actually love the KML. It allows you to load that right into Google Earth. When you share it with a customer, they're able to look at those same points. This, all the data that you've collected is there. Even the images are there. So it moves to Google Earth really nicely. Uh, so that's kind of the gist of that. We are, we're getting really shy on time, but I do want to just quickly show you the catalogs. So let me go ahead and close out of this project. And I want to jump and show you the catalogs. So the catalogs are where we store all this information. One of the examples that, that we've used is this uh, sample tree catalog. Well, this is a great example of how easy these are to create. Uh, one of my coworkers uh, who's left us now, Jim, uh, Benson, he's retired, but Jim decided one day he needed to make a tree catalog. He did a quick online search, and within 20 minutes he was able to create this little tree catalog that was broken into these different broad categories where he had broadleaf trees, conifers, and palms. Yesterday I decided, well, I want to see how easy it is to add another one, so I went ahead and added cactus. So it's easy to add different items to those things. You get to choose uh, what the symbol looks like, so um, you have some default ones to choose from, or I, you can actually do a custom, and you can select that, and I happen to have a picture somewhere, I can't even remember where, of a cactus. <laughs> Might be on the desktop there. Yep, there's my cactus. So I open that, and that becomes my, my symbol for that icon. So you have some control over there, over that. Um, and then you can come in here and add some information. So if I want that drop down, I've added several things. I want it to be have a field that says inspected and automatically gives me a date, notes with where they can enter text, height and feet where they can enter a number. I also want to have some drop downs where they want to look at specific things. So maybe I want to look at health. And I want to say excellent, average, poor. Let's add one, dead. <laughs> And we'll add that. So that would now be in our drop down of things that are there. And we can say, never mind, we don't want that. So we have a lot of control over what you can, what information is in that object database that you're using for mapping. Um, we are about out of time. I promised to stay the 30 minutes. So we're going to, we're going to call it good for now. Um, but there's an awful lot of tools that this works great for. We have a, customers using Aspect in a variety of areas, but at the end of the day, it usually is a, just a great way to make sure that you know where things are. I, I talk to people all the time that are doing, for example, maintenance, where uh, they're telling me, well, we spend hours on the phone trying to figure out where the valve box is and where the sprinkler controller is and uh, for, you know, doing blowouts or different things like that for maintenance. It does a great job for your as built. It just serves a variety of purposes. Um, if you want additional information, if you want to see more of the details behind the software, please don't hesitate to contact me. There's my contact information. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions to give you additional information and to help you with, uh, with having a better understanding of what Aspect is, is, can do for you. Thank you.